This impressive building has all the classic qualities of a Tudor castle. But this castle is much more than its thick stone walls and its Tudor works of art. It's the place where Anne Boleyn spent many years of her life. It's also the setting for her courtship with Henry VIII, where he sent her many letters declaring his love. And it's here that Anne's parents made the decisions about her upbringing that would ultimately shape the rise and the fall of the whole family. Because how did this girl, who was not considered a beauty by any means, capture the heart of the married King of England? Anne lived here with her mother and father, Elizabeth and Thomas, her older sister Mary and her brother George. The family moved to this incredible castle in 1505 when her father inherited the house. The Boleyn family had always been ambitious and had risen from the ranks of yeoman landowners to noblemen in just a few generations. Their move to Hever helped secure the Boleyn status. But head of the family, Thomas, wanted more for his children. He wanted them to rise to the very top. Historian Elizabeth Norton has written several books on the Boleyn family and knows all about Anne's journey to becoming queen. What would it have been like for Anne growing up here? She would have spent a lot of time with her siblings, her elder sister Mary and her younger brother George. They would have been taught their letters by the parish priest before having tutors employed when they were a bit older. Education was a big thing here, obviously. Absolutely. Um, education was particularly important to the Boleyns. Mm. Anne was renowned for being well-educated, um, particularly she could speak French, she could read and write. And it's really that that shapes her. Anne showed great promise during these formative years and was chosen over her older sister Mary to attend the court of Archduchess Margaret of Austria. Anne made a very good impression on the court and was described as presentable and pleasant by the princess. It seems even as a youngster, probably no more than 12 years old, Anne was accomplished in court etiquette, a skill she would later use to her advantage. By 1513, she was asked by her father to attend another royal, this time Henry VIII's sister, Mary Tudor, in France. French style, French fashion, French culture, mon dieu. The French were trendsetting as much in the 16th century as they do today. And Anne Boleyn was immersed in all of it at the court of Queen Mary, from the age of 13 to 21. But what did she learn en France? Anne's time in France was crucial to the woman that she later became. She learnt style and grace at the French court. It was the most sophisticated in Europe. She also learnt courtly love. Anne would have learnt how to interact with men while she was in France. So when she came back to England wearing her French hoods, which showed a daring amount of hair, she stood out. Anne wasn't the only sister to serve in French court. The other Bolin girl, Mary, also spent her formative years there. But Mary took quite a different approach to her sister, giving herself fully to several courtiers and eventually King Francis of France himself. Mary was later referred to by Francis of France as a very great whore and infamous above others. It looks as though she was sent home in disgrace before emerging at the English court as a mistress of Henry VIII. Anne and her sister Mary were close, and Anne saw how Mary was treated when she gave in to Henry's advances. Henry was far from generous with his mistresses. Mary gained little more than two illegitimate children. Anne saw that her sister was simply discarded by the king with very little to show for it, and she decided that she wanted something else. She wanted a good husband and was not going to yield to the king. Just a few months after Henry's affair with Mary, he was chasing Anne. Now, wise to Henry's tendencies to cast aside his mistresses once he got them into bed, Anne told Henry she wouldn't be his lover until she was his wife. Henry. 
Henry wanted Anne to be his mistress, something that Anne, who was looking to make a good marriage, could never allow. We know that Anne retreated back to Hever Castle. Henry VIII's love letters survive and show him pursuing her. So speaking of being struck with the dart of love, eventually he realised he had to divorce his wife and that led on to the long period of divorce before they could marry in 1533. Anne Boleyn achieved her father's goal and became Queen of England. But unable to produce a male heir, her marriage was short-lived. She was queen for just 1,000 days before Henry viciously turned against her. In a shocking sequence of events, Anne was beheaded for treason at the Tower of London in 1536. An extraordinary outcome for a girl who showed such promise. So in your opinion, Elizabeth, what do you think was the biggest influence in Anne's upbringing that shaped her life? For Anne, it has to be France. When she returned to England at the age of around 21, she was French in all but birth, she was fluent, she had a certain grace about her. And as part of that, her father must have a great deal of the credit because mm. he was one who believed in her enough to send her first to Brussels and then on to France. And it's really that that shapes Anne and sets her apart from all the other women at the English court. The Boleyn family were ambitious and educated and they knew the importance of a good marriage. Anne's strength and spirit helped her rise to the very highest rank, but it also in part led to her execution. Tudor England was a tumultuous period in our history and the pursuit of power was quite literally a cutthroat business. <laughs> 